All right, should be live here. We should be live. This is a uh, fight night, so there's no rush for me. I can pause the event. It's streamed anyways. And squeeze my post-fight review of this fight in. I like how I look at the fight immediately after the fight. I like the way I look at fights immediately after. It, it can be different after I watch. Well, it is different. It's usually always different after I watch it twice. But after that first time, you have a, a, a different feel for it. Santos was winning the fight. She was winning the fight. Listen, that was a gallant performance by Blanchfield. But there's some things going on there that made me uncomfortable. As I'm sure, sure you all saw. <laughs> now I took, I changed my pick to Aaron Blanchfield. At first I took Taylor Santos. And I think y'all see why. Okay, but Santos needs to be better at getting fighters off of her. Now, she did get her off of her a few times. Smashed her with some elbows. Got her up off of her. But it was too much time spent with Aaron all up on her. Okay. And I don't know. Aaron gets hit too much and she she gets hit too easily she needs to put her hands up okay because a lot of times when she gets hit her hands are right there to be up they're just not and they may as well be up if they're not throwing punches okay it may as they may as well deflect a punch Or she is too defensively irresponsible for me to believe that she would, listen, first of all, be a long reigning champion. Second of all, to do better against an Alexa Grasso, who has better striking. Now, I, I changed my pick to Aaron Blanchfield because I said that uh, Aaron has better is a better striker than Santos. Fundamentally, you see how, uh, especially towards the end of the fight, Santos is throwing these hooks. And Aaron's straight punches are far more effective. And Aaron was touching her up a lot in that third round as Santos started to tire. That was the problem I had with Santos striking. That is what I was talking about as far as Aaron being a better striker. But, as a striker, I knew Santos had far more power. You know, far more power. And I didn't know if Aaron would be able to take it. That's, that's pretty much it. I'm like, look, man. Aaron might be a better striker. But, Santos hits mighty hard. She sat girls down with punches. And her kicks are super hard. She sat Aaron down. She knocks you off your feet. She's got crazy power. So she could still hit Aaron and knock her out. Man, listen. That first round, she was piecing Aaron up bad. Now that's not the first time that's happened with Aaron Blanchfield. That's not the first time that's happened with her. Okay. 
Santos gassed out. Now let me say, if that if that would have been a five round fight, that might we don't know how it would have went, but that might have gotten worse for Santos because it looked like she was getting a lot more tired as the third round went on. It was starting to look bad, like she was getting hit with every shot, and Aaron's shots wasn't that fast, wasn't that much speed on them. But she was boxing Santos' hair like a speed bag. It's like, what is this? So, yeah, but Santos didn't look hurt. She just looked gassed. So I don't know if she got the gas, you know, all that wrestling. And the thing is, Aaron got a crazy gas tank. After all that wrestling, Aaron still got a good uh, gas tank. She got a five-round gas tank in Blanchfield. So look, she might take everybody's punches. But Grazo is a better striker than Santos. And who knows, she might hit harder. You can't go through your career, man, just getting getting tattooed like that. That's not a part of long of a long reigning champion. I mean, you look at the long reigning champions. They're all difficult to hit. Demetrius Johnson. Valentina Shevchenko. I mean, yeah, Joanna got by with it. But people were calling her downfall because she got hit so much. Uh, Anderson Silva. Um, Israel Adesanya. A lot of these long-reigning champions, they got, they got pretty decent defense. Even Amanda Nunes. For the women, she, she got pretty good like head movement, upper body movement. She does. She does. That was just that that was a bad fight she had with Pena, I understand. And the rematch, she was getting touched up. Granted. Pena throw raggedy punches, but they get there. For the most part, Nunez got pretty decent defense. She's pretty good with swatting shots away too with her hands. She's real good with that. Really, really good with that. Um so listen, man. I, I I could probably see Aaron taking the title. You know, who knows? She seems durable. But when you start uh, giving fighters credit for how durable they are, we heard that discussion before. That's always a bad sign. And, and another thing is, some people are going to argue that Santos actually won this fight. It was a close competitive fight. And Aaron seemed to take more damage. Also, wait a minute. Yes, 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 yes. This wasn't no one-sided fight. By no means. And uh, some people will look at Aaron's as panic wrestling. This is just what the, that's what you're going to see in the comment sections. They're going to be like, look, man. Aaron got tired of getting pieced up. So she started running in the clinch, going for a takedown, failing over and over, getting knocked out of the clinch. Going back into the clinch because she's getting pieced up so much. Now, I've seen this happen before. It happened against, uh, I, I think, multiple fighters, man. This is not the first time. This is, this is a pattern. In Aaron Blanchfield fights, it, it, it's a pattern, and we've seen Santos gas before. People have questioned her gas tank before. So, you know, not flawless fighters, but that was a classic fight, in my opinion. That was a classic fight because of the uh, effort. The effort, maybe the technique wasn't a level, but they they went all in. They they tried their hardest. The whole fight. Now Aaron might lose some points for the panic wrestling, what some people will see as panic wrestling. Like, hey, I can't. I'm ble I'm bleeding. I'm getting hit hard. I can't stop her from hitting me. 
you know. Now, Aaron was hitting her a few times, but man, Santos was boxing her head. Hitting her, hitting her heart is a bad visual. Bad visual, and I'm sure it felt bad. I'm sure she could have felt better in there, Aaron Blanchfield. So, yeah, what about a fighter who don't gas? What about a fighter who's a little better in a clinch than Santos and can uh, get her off of her? Better with elbows. I don't know, man. She gets his, hit a lot. This is 125. Think of fighters who are defensively responsible like Rose and Amiunas. This is 125 now. We're talking about who's going to be the next long reigning champion. Think of defensively responsible fighters like Rose Nama Yunus, who you might not wrestle against the cage. Think of Manon Fior, how she might box uh, Aaron Blanchfield's face. Are you serious? No, no. You know, I like Aaron. She's a crazy, she's an extremely crazy chick. Like, like that performance, for her to fight through, she had to fight through adversity. Aaron Blanchfield. She had to fight through adversity. And she fought through it and started to fight again towards the end even though she's getting pieced up in the first round in the last round she tried to be the one who was winning the striking and it looked like she she tried to opt to stand up that's what it felt like as i watched the fight i'm like okay aaron is trying to get some get back in the first round she was getting pieced up in the first round now she sees Santos is tired and she's a lot easier to hit. Let me uh, box Santos up a little bit now to uh, sort of balance things out and close a lot stronger than Taylor Santos. So I can't complain about the decision based on um, the logistics of the fight, how it unfolded. Yes, you can uh, tax Blanchfield for sort of panic wrestling to hide a, a deficit, a flaw, and what happens when she and, and all of that. But hey, it was a close fight. That the second round, you know, there was a lot of time spent where Santos was. Uh, but listen, again, Santos could be argued that she won it because in the second round it was always santos with the, with the inside fighting for the most part the, the fighter who would always uh end up catching elbows and going backwards would be aaron blanchfield now she aaron blanchfield would come right back in but uh <clears throat> man aaron blanchfield was getting pieced up bad that was looking bad. And I'm like, I'm watching the first round. I'm like, wow, I thought Aaron was the better striker, but uh, Santos looked like the better striker. And in the first round, Santos looked like the better striker, man. If Santos maintained that type of stamina, she'd be able to, you would think, piece Aaron up like that the whole fight. So there's some defensive lapses there people don't start with the the Aaron Blanchfield crowd I don't want to hear it I don't want to hear it don't start with all that I know you're gonna come but oh Aaron is awesome yes she's uh unusual she is a, a like a Martian dude isn't she that was a classic fight Okay, for, for women, 
That was a classic fight. Make no mistake. Now I know how how I know the fellas how they're gonna they're gonna say, hey, raggedy punches, yes, all of that raggedy. It's about effort. It's about effort. Are you trying to kill that person with those raggedy punches? That's all that counts. Think about it now. Just let's be fair now. Be adults. Let's be fair. It doesn't. It, at the end of the, of the day, the only thing that matters is: Are you trying to take that person's head off with those raggedy punches and kicks, and be trying to take your head off? And when she throws strikes, she looks funny, doesn't she? Like the state puff marshmallow man. There's no like aesthetic form to her shots or nothing. It just looked like she just lobs them out like. She is a funny looking fighter, like a beach, a uh, uh, soccer mom body. She doesn't have an athletic build. It looks like somebody who got out of the crowd into the uh, cage. I've said that before. So you would better. It's easy to bet against her. You know what I'm saying? Look, look if she gets matched up against Grazo, I'm taking Grazo. I'm telling you, Grazo, much better striker. Much better striker than Santos. She got uh, good takedown defense herself. And she got good ground skills herself. Look at that. Let's be honest now. I would have to take Grazo. Respect to Blanchfield. You know, good fighter. Take Grazo. If she fight Aaron uh, Manon Fior, I'd have to take Manon. Respect the blend. I'm just letting y'all know up front. Y'all about to see me if these matchups happen. Y'all about to see me take a lot of fighters against Aaron Blanchfield based on uh, this fight right here. If she get matched up against Rose, listen, Rose, I would be very tempted to take Aaron Blanchfield in that fight. I'll probably take Aaron, but I'd be terrified for Aaron. Especially early in that fight. I'm a boy. No. She, she would get boxed up bad. Boxed up bad against Rose, man. No. Oh, no. So I take Rose against her. Who else is up there? Valentina? Man. I heard that uh, Aaron already turned down a fight against Valentina. Shevchenko. Hmm? Somebody left the comment. I'm not the only one that knows that or that heard that. Shevchenko herself said that. So you're about to see me pick a lot of fighters against Aaron Blanchfield, man. Because if she can't stop uh, Santos from hitting her that much, she's not going to be able to stop Rose from hitting her like that or even worse. Uh, and Alexa Grazo, man, I'm, I'd be worried for Aaron. Listen, man, you can't take a uh, punishment like that fight after fight after fight after fight after fight after. You, you see what I'm saying? Maybe Aaron has what it takes to beat those fighters like Manon. Maybe she can do the same thing she did here. But the human body, you, you at a certain point, you're going to start to give in to those shots. You, know, you you see, and you eventually going to be hurt. You're going to get hurt by one of those shots. You can't just uh, take that much punishment in fights against rather subpar strikers like Taylor Santos. I, I would say as a striker, Santos is is subpar. Yeah, 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 and that's again. Now, some people will look at it like that, too. They won't look at it as panic wrestling. They'll look at it as typical uh, Aaron Blanchfield. And that is traditional Aaron Blanchfield to go for takedowns, even if she's not getting it, to keep going for them. You know, to keep trying. So, again, that's why it will make it hard to argue against the decision and that's what she did for much of the second round if i'm not mistaken if i'm remembering correctly much of the second round involved a lot of that aaron get uh get her against the, the cage 
she's unable. She might have elbowed Aaron off a couple times, but then boom, right back on the cage. So the logistics of the fight makes the de- I felt like makes made the decision acceptable. I'm like, okay, yeah, I can do. That. I'm not gonna call it a robbery or nothing crazy like that. Yeah, I can deal with that. Yeah, that was a real good fight. I thought it was a really excellent, excellent fight. Excellent fight. But, but, but man, the, the the defense, the defense, I would be worried. And who else? Listen, man, even Jennifer Maya. I think Jennifer Maya got better hands than Santos. You don't have the power. But again, Aaron would take a lot of shots in that fight. What's going to happen when she can't, you know, do all this? And she's just getting pieced up just too bad. <laughs> and somebody is able to get her up off of her. You know what else that looks bad for Aaron? In the clinches, she doesn't look all that skilled. She ain't no Loma Lagoonie, man. She's not pulverizing you in the clinch. She's just going for takedowns. Which makes her vulnerable to like guillotines and, and other things. Uh, in that fight, I was thinking to myself in, the, in some of those positions, if that would have been Myra Bueno Silva, you, you might have been in trouble. Like up close in the clinches, Silva is more dangerous than a lot of other fighters. She has uh, multiple submissions up close in close quarters like that. Now, say if you combine that with the elbow technique of a Loma and Silva's clinch uh, game as far as elbows is not that bad. That fighter would be a problem for Aaron. That'd be a problem for Aaron, especially if they were strong and had a good as a takedown defense as uh, Taylor Santos. Taylor Santos got really good takedown defense because most girls don't, they can't take or stop Aaron's Take down to, you know what else? I think she might take Val. She she would probably take Shevchenko down. Aaron would probably take Shevchenko down. So listen, man, I can see Aaron getting the belt. Don't don't make no mistake. I can see it happening. I can see her getting Alexa Grasso down. I'd take Grasso, but I could see Aaron taking Alexa Grasso down. So it's still up in the air. It's still up in the air. I'm, I might pick. A lot of fighters against Aaron, but I'm not saying that Aaron won't get the title. I think it's possible. And but man, it would be hard. I don't. I I I, I won't say. I won't say that she will make a lot of title, uh, multiple title defenses, consecutive title defenses. She might get her hands on title a few times, two, three times, but. She takes too much punishment. She takes too too much punishment. Now, some of you, you think she got an iron jaw, she, Rocky, she'll be able to do it. Okay, that's your prediction. We'll see whose prediction turns out right in the end. All right, now let's finish this card and hope we get our money's worth. 